you're back with Notebook Check Tech Reviews and we've got the Acer Aspire V5 multimedia device here. And I want to go through, through that in this uh, video. But just take a look behind me. I've got about three or four devices, actually one unknown or maybe two unknown on the bottom of that pile there. That I need to get through the next 48 hours. So stay tuned, like and subscribe and you'll get notifications of when those reviews go up. Back to the Acer Aspire V5. I'll go through some details that we've got out of our lab test. So screen performance, uh, battery life, heat, noise, and uh, of course CPU and GPU performance as well. It's a fairly standard 15.6 inch multimedia laptop aimed at a fairly low price point. There's a higher uh, higher end version of this. This is the one with the, uh, the GeForce 940M inside and a Core i5 Skylake uh, processor. There's eight gigs of RAM in it. And if you, fact, if you look across to the uh, specs here, you'll see all the details there, including the fact that this isn't an IP screen so it's full HD but you've got those inversions problem inversions problems that you get with the TN LED panels so that's not perfect um, backlight on the keyboard is pretty good and uh, the keyboard itself not too bad no real complaints about the keyboard at this price certainly good enough for some uh, some student project work there there's a 37 watt hour battery inside which isn't the biggest for this size of device a 15.6 inch screen Unless Acer have kept that backlight brightness down, won't return much uh, in terms of battery performance. I'll give you the details on that screen, on that battery performance later in this review. But let's take a look at the ports first. You'll see we've got a reasonable selection of ports starting on this side. We've got that uh, DVD reader, power, and there's a USB uh, port there. Spin it round and you'll see a reasonable selection, a sensible selection of ports, including two USB 3s, the HDMI, uh, gigabit Ethernet port and a classic VGA port there. The SD card reader is on the front. Our tests showed that it wasn't very fast. 25 megabytes per second is all we got out of it and that's quite a low speed if you're thinking of transferring uh, full HD video files for, for example and certainly 4K. That's going to take a long time to transfer over that SD card reader. There's no access hatch on the back and the battery is not removable. Uh, one assumes you can actually take that apart and get to the disk. There's a one terabyte spinning hard drive, not SSD cache enabled. You might be able to swap that out for an SSD. Uh, there used to be an mSATA port available in a version of this, but as they've put the uh, DVD writer in, that port has now gone. So you won't be able to drop an M2 SATA inside. Before we go on to performance ratings and the battery life scores, just take a look at the casing. There's a little bit of give in that uh, screen. It is plastic all around, very plasticky all around. There's no real uh, trying to hide the fact by Acer there. It doesn't even look part metallic. Um, so you're looking at a mid-range uh, build quality here. The screen appears in another Acer Aspire V5, the 591 G, and I'm looking at the uh, results for that one. Center brightness there 249 so they've kept the brightness right down on this and look at the contrast just 519 that's not great anything below a thousand in 2016 is really going into the sort of mainstream low-end category. Colors and grayscale accuracies the deltas there 10.15 and 12.13 are really not that good that's way out of the uh, sort of five range that we would expect a good screen to have anything over 10 and it starts to get pretty poor. You'll see some more information on the site including some measurements on uh, pulse width modulation. We did actually measure some PWN at 1000 Hz so if you're sensitive to PWN then take a look at the details on the full review. On to performance. Um, there is a little bit of throttling but only under real heavy load for a very long time. Um, we've got details of that in the full review but here are a look at some of the Let's look at some of the performance test results for you now. Uh, Cinebench R15 multi scores. And just one note we did notice a little bit of throttling, but only under really heavy long term loads. So you don't need to worry too much about throttling here. There's the Acer Aspire V3 575G5093. <coughs> 272 two points on the Cinebench R15. And look at that uh, Acer Aspire V5 up there with the quad core CPU, 677 points. It sits in the same bracket as the Toshiba L50C that we tested recently, which got a reasonable score, I think 84, 85%, and certainly left um, a little bit of a mark on me because it was a great all rounder. 
Coming in uh, slightly lower than that, but then above the median Akoya E6422, which is a, a basically a European distributed uh, device. PC Mark score, well, this has got the spinning hard drive in, and that always affects PC Mark 7 scores. 2865 isn't that good. Um, let's go to some GPU scores, and we'll. Uh, Take the 3D Mark 11 performance score, 2568, and I want to compare it again to that Toshiba Satellite L50, which had the 930M. Of course, that's coming down below the scores of the 940M in this Acer Aspire V3. So what does it give you for gaming? Well, we put it through, put it through a few gaming tests. Old Tomb Raider or original Tomb Raider from 2013, no problem. Bioshock Infinite, no problem. But take the latest Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, you're not going to get much out of this. So it's obviously an entry-level PC gaming device. Low settings, maybe some medium settings on some older games. And that's the sort of target gaming market you've got here. Just want to go back to the uh, hard disk uh, scores because that is going to be an issue for some people. Hard disks tend to be a bottleneck uh, when you're using a lot of disk operations. For example, when Defender is running, when you're doing updates, when the system is doing indexing, which is a lot of the time. Crystal Mark 3 scores here, maximum 111 megabytes per second sequential read. And then that 4K write speed down there, bang, that is a very important score. And if it's under 10 megabytes per second, in my opinion, you start to get some issues when you really push the device. We're under 1 megabyte per second here, so there's not even an SSD cache to help. That could be an issue. Bear in mind, if you're throwing around large files or even small files in big quantities, zips and stuff like that, this could be an issue for you. I'm just listening for the fan. I can barely hear it at the moment. In our noise test, we got a maximum 41.4 dBA. It's just into the really um, hearable range. It's not into the noisy range. Uh, and it's a little bit um, noisier than some of the comparable devices we've had uh, recently at this price point and at this um, performance point. Temperatures, well, around this part, both underneath and on top of the uh, keyboard, a little bit warm. Up to 58, sorry, 58 point, no, that's 59.6 underneath there. So that is a problem if you're having this on your lap, doing gaming or rendering or anything like that. Watch out for that warm underside. We spoke about that small battery capacity earlier on in the review. Uh, let me give you the battery runtime test results that we got from our lab. And I'm going to highlight the Wi-Fi surfing test result there, 3 hours and 57 minutes. That's not fantastic. And bear in mind, um, this is a big screen, uh, but really it should be a little bit better than that uh, for this weight of device. And the maximum uh, load, that's for gaming or any sort of heavy load work, 1 hour 56. That's normal for a laptop of this, uh, this category. And idle, well, if you want to get away with some uh, low light, Typing, seven hours and six minutes uh, is about all you get out of it. Look at the Toshiba Satellite L50C that we uh, reviewed just recently. I encourage you to check out that review video. Wi-Fi surfing there on that 345 minutes. That compares to 237 minutes on the Acer Aspire V3 we have here. 146% of the battery life of this Acer Aspire V3. If you've fast forwarded to this section, the pros and cons and the overall score breakdown, you're welcome. Don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the videos. I've got that lot behind me. They're going to be coming up in the next 48 hours. And it includes the Lenovo X260, uh, an Asus ROG undefined gaming device. I have no idea what that is yet. We've also got a Lenovo Diapad 500S, and in this one, no idea, haven't even unboxed it yet. We'll get to that soon. Don't forget to subscribe. You'll get notifications when we send those videos up to our channel. Right, to the pros and cons. Non-glare display, well, that's an advantage. That's pretty much the only advantage of this display because it's got poor colors, poor brightness, and poor contrast. The input devices are okay, so that keyboard and mouse. So for project work, I think for students, probably okay there in terms of the uh, the input area there. And the keyboard is backlit as well, so that's quite an advantage. Your dark dorm room, that's going to be nice to use in there. There isn't a maintenance hat, so there's no easy upgrade of RAM uh, or disk here, although I pretty much, I'm pretty much certain you could get the back off this fairly easily and get access to the stuff inside. As I mentioned, screen 
brightness and contrast are below average. We had a crackling sound through audio playback. I haven't experienced that, experienced that myself, but uh, our reviewer has put notes in the full review for you to read. Uh, performance, not concert at maximum low, but that really is a maximum low scenario where we saw some variation in CPU and GPU clock rates. Our reviewer on this one was Rene Cole. Thanks to Rene for his review. Uh, we put this through the test lab. I think Sebastian Jensch was our test lab engineer on this one. And this is what we got out of it. A 79% overall weighted multimedia laptop score. And there's a breakdown of the scores. As usual, if you've got something in your head, uh, an idea of how you want to use a laptop, go into those scores and think, right, do I need a good screen? If you don't need a good screen, you can ignore any low screen results. If you need a quality keyboard make sure you look for a quality keyboard performance score there's the breakdown and if you have any questions we'll try and answer them if you put the questions in the comments underneath this youtube video so thanks for watching again and again don't forget to subscribe like if you get a little bit out of this don't forget that toshiba l50c video is also up really head to head with this uh, asus Aspire v3 scoring a little bit better than the, the v3 check it out thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next notebook check tech review Thank you.